when I was in high school I worked in a dry cleaners and people who worked in the state mental institution close to the dry cleaners would bring their uniforms in and so you know I would chat with them about what they did in the state mental institution. As a high school kid here I was on a unit with 40 elderly women who were confused and in those days because this was a long time ago we thought they were mentally ill but they really all had some phase of dementia. Even as a high school student, I knew something was wrong with this because they should have activities. They should be doing something. There wasn't even a TV. Then I headed off to college and decided I was going to go into nursing and I was going to go into health, mental health and I was going to change mental health care in the world. You know, those big, what are they, big, hairy, audacious goals. Mm -hmm. Anyway. By the time I got out of nursing school, I decided I wanted to be an ICU nurse. So I never did go back to uh, mental health, but that's really got me interested in seeing that we weren't doing what we should be doing. You know, I think I like learning and if I'm not learning, I may as well not exist anymore. I think the mark of a good teacher is being able to watch your audience, see if they're paying audience, I'm going to call it an audience, but the student is audi an audience. And if you don't provide education and entertainment at the same time, you lose them. So I decided to get my PhD in physiology, which I've always loved. I mean, the body's just amazing, how it functions despite what we do to it. UNLV or off offered a course in at Outreach called um, Introduction to Stand-Up Comedy. When I was teaching, I would insert jokes into the class or silly things, you know, because I had to keep the students' attention. So I thought, well, this would be fun. And so I took the course and I performed at a few, few flea bag bars around town but then when I took on the job of um, acting vice president, I thought this is probably not going to work. I'm very proud of our growth of, en of enrollment. We've been able to efficiently and effectively double our enrollment and maintain that doubled enrollment in the undergraduate program. But probably the thing that I'm most proud of is the Simulation Center and was a collaboration between the School of Medicine at, from UNR and Nevada State College School of Nursing. This is a real challenge to get two professions and three different institutions, albeit all within the NG system, to collaborate on anything. And that was, it produced a lot of growth for all of us who planned it because we had to work together and realize that everybody had to have their needs met. I'm really pleased with the growth of our graduate programs. All of our graduate programs are online. They're highly ranked. So I think we're fulfilling the needs that Nevada set out for UNLV School of Nursing. We started something we called years ago called the home hospital system where we tried to keep students in the same hospital and we had a very successful model going with uh, Desert Springs Hospital. Well that eventually evolved and now we, it's evolved to something called a dedicated education unit. Our most successful ones of these are over at Summerlin Hospital. As I look back on um, my relationship with Carolyn over a period of more than eight years, the greatest success story I think is through her passion and efforts in launching an entirely new model for how nursing education is delivered here in Las Vegas. Carolyn is very passionate. Her passion's contagious for what she you know, works for. I think she's fought for resources. She's a very engaging individual and you, it's a rewarding experience to work with her. Um, and I think she's built a good team around her. There's a vision there, and I think everyone's worked collectively to make nursing um, better at UNLV in terms of resources, faculty, and enrollment. She's got a great sense of humor balanced by a hard dose of reality, shall we say. I mean, she's very pragmatic in her approach, but keeps a levity, sense of levity to it. But I think she's built a great team. They've fought for resources. They've been innovative in their approach. And the program, I think, has just been taken to a whole nother level under her leadership. She is a genuine person. She expects a lot. And she 
usually gets a lot because of her high expectations. I think the status of the school and certainly the simulation center, which is a key tangible thing which can be attributed to her leadership. I've always thought of her, I mean, she's just amazing to me. She's always just been just the best supervisor I think that I could have as far as, you know, being there to support me, but also letting me, you know, make my own mistakes and, and do my own thing and, um, you know, grow myself. But also, I always know that she's there to help if I need her to. I think that's probably one of her greatest legacies is that she's, you know, she's very honest. She's very well respected, um, but she's really taken the School of Nursing to the place it is today, where it's you know a nationally ranked program.